The best way to manage a seasonal business is by planning ahead. If you know that you're in busy season or busy season is coming up, then take necessary steps, maybe such as hiring additional staff if that's needed, right? You can hire travel therapists if you want, expanding your inventory, offering more services, setting realistic goals for that. Welcome back to another episode of Female Empowered. I'm once again, your host, Krista Gurka. Today, I have a topic that is frequently asked of me how I handle this, especially being in Miami, where we have a ton of snowbirds. What I'm going to talk about today, what we're going to talk about here on this episode is how to prepare for seasonality in your business. So preparing for things like um, seasonal dips, but also seasonal peaks in your business. So think like in Miami, for example, we have a ton of snowbirds. So people come down here for the winter, but then leave in the summer because it's hot as hell here. Um, But there's a lot of other businesses and a lot of other reasons why some businesses may hit peaks and others hit valleys. And in an effort to create as much consistency in your business as possible, what I'm going to talk about today on this podcast is how you can prepare for those times, and then also what you can do in some of the slower times, okay? So that you are as consistent as possible with your cash flow and with your initiatives and such. So some of the businesses besides our healthcare and wellness businesses that have seasonality are, again, not so much in Miami because our weather is pretty consistent, but if you live in other parts of the country or the world, think like landscapers, HVAC, so AC repair people, roofers, those people, those businesses are really popular spring and summer. Um, Things like flower businesses, um, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, um, you know, uh, gift basket businesses around any type of holiday. So Christmas, Easter is really big. We just had Easter. So Easter for gift baskets and stuff like that. So if you run any kind of like an e-commerce business, anytime around the, the holiday shopping season is probably a peak time for you guys as well, whereas the summer might be low. So like I said before, for the fitness and wellness industry, for boutique fitness, and also for boutique physical therapy practices, we do see seasonal highs. So in boutique fitness, we see a ton of seasonal highs at the beginning of the year, new year's resolutions, people really getting back to it. Um, but for boutique wellness for boutique physical therapy, oftentimes we see it at the end of the year because people have already paid into their deductible. So they want to get the benefit the most out of, you know, if they're sending payments to get reimbursed through insurance and things of that nature. Whereas in the summer months, a lot of boutique fitness and boutique physical therapy can be a little bit slower because people are traveling, kids are out of school. There's all sorts of reasons for this. Um, Here in Miami, like I said, we do, our peak is from about October, Halloween, between Halloween and Thanksgiving through about Easter. So right about now. Um, And then our slow times are, you know, May through August or September, because we do have a lot of snowbirds and people will leave. They'll go to Colorado or New York or the Berkshires or the Hamptons for the summer. I know, I know great lives, right? Um, And so what we have tried to do over the last 10 years is really watch our metrics, watch our cash flow so that we can prepare for these times of the year. And we can be very intentional about what we want to do in the busy months so that we can prepare to be very intentional for what we want to do in the slower months. So we have more consistent income throughout the year. All right. The best way to manage a seasonal business is by planning ahead. If you know that you're in busy season or busy season is coming up, then take necessary steps, maybe such as hiring additional staff if that's needed, right? You can hire travel therapists if you want, expanding your inventory, offering more services, setting realistic goals for that time frame, and by mitigating the risk of burnout by taking longer vacations or time off or shortening your days and such 
in the slower times. Okay. So regardless, really, honestly, regardless of the nature of your business, your peak seasons are often key to your success. So for example, January, February, March are really, really busy months for us. I really encourage my team, my staff not to take vacation during those months. They are the busiest months we have. Our schedules are full. We usually run at a high 80, 90% utilization. So if at all possible, where we can take vacation in April, May, especially during the summer, it is more feasible for the business. Now that does not mean that I say no, or I don't approve vacation during those times. I obviously do. We just had someone go on their honeymoon. That happened also last year in January. And so we just plan ahead. And so it's really important if someone is going to take time off during this time that they give a lot of lead time. Okay. So that we can look at the schedule and see who can, who needs to fill in. We also have a sub list of people that really don't work, but they are available for subbing when we really, really need some subbing and they'll come in and help us during those times. So it's having also a strong financial plan so that you get through these less profitable months. And you know, you're not going to plan for like a big initiative where you're going to have to spend a lot of money or order a ton of in inventory when the lower income months are coming up. You don't want to have a ton of expenses during those months, or at least you want to know ahead of time so that you can plan. Okay. If you're a business owner that is concerned about making it through revenue slumps, keep listening because we're going to go over 10 ways to maneuver your way through months when your business is making less money, which happens to all of us. Okay. So number one, really know your business cycle. The best way to deal with seasonal dips is to know when it occurs or when they are going to occur. By your second or third year of business, you really should have a good idea of your client's buying habits. And so Anytime we start a business, and especially in our industry, our business ebbs and flows. Our schedules can be very full, and then we can get cancellations. We're going to have highs and lows, especially in the first couple of years. But if you continue to track year over year, by your, usually by your third year, you'll start to see some trends in your utilization rate, in your new client attendance, in your revenue, so that you can plan ahead in the future. So really understanding your business cycles number one. Okay. Number two, measure the difference in revenue intake. So what you want to see is when are you seeing high revenue? So like I said, January, February, March for us, high revenues. Okay. Now that doesn't mean that the other months of the year are going to be shit. It's not like they're going to go down to nothing, but measuring the difference between your revenue in quarter one and your revenue in quarter three could really be crucial to helping you understand what your financial obligations are and how you can set aside money so you don't have to really rob Peter to pay Paul. I don't know if you're old enough to understand that analogy, but my mom used to say that all the time. Um, or make sure that you're not um, really needing to dip into your savings to operate during those slower months. Again, this is why really, really, really important to track everything you do. Track, track, track. Even if you don't understand it at first, I highly, highly encourage you to track your stuff. How many new clients are coming in? Patients, how many new people are you getting in every month? How many new, how many people are returning month over month? And what is your utilization rate? So like how much of your schedule is full? Okay. Also getting people into your rev, into your website, onto your newsletter during those slower months can help you prepare for increased sales during those peak times. Okay. So number three kind of piggybacks off of that really survey your regular customers. I hear this all the time. Um, when I say to people, well, do you know why they're not coming? Well, I think it's because of this. And I say, do you think, or do you know, because you may think, think the reason for dips in your business is obvious, but sometimes it's not. So unless you really hear it straight from the horse's mouth, another little analogy there, you don't know for sure. So doing a customer satisfaction survey or a customer just question, you know, we noticed that 
we dip in attendance during July and August. Can does one of these resonate with you or like do you see yourself in one of these i don't come in the in the summer because i'm traveling i come less in the summer because my kids are in camp and the times don't work for me um i don't you know i don't know you can come up with some ways so that you can get real-time feedback so that you can better understand how your customers think which we say this all the time, understand their buying patterns, understand how they think and feel is really vital to your success as a business owner. Getting this kind of information from these surveys really allows you to better understand your target audience. And then you can develop marketing initiatives, things like flash sales, promotions, especially things that are maybe not offered at the other time of the year to keep your loyal customers coming back year after year after year and year round. So one of the things we did a couple of years ago was we, we do see a dip in the summer. So sometime June, July, and August sometimes can be a little slower. I'm not going to say slow completely, but slower. So we see the biggest dip in our private one-on-one -on -one business. Now, if we look at the numbers and we look at the metrics, most of the people that are coming for private Pilates or one-on-one -on -one physical therapy, they're paying more throughout the year. And so they usually have a little more disposable income. So some of these people are the people that do go away. They go to the Colorado, they go to the Berkshires in the summer. So we see a little bit of dip in that. Now, one of the things we've started to implement is virtual sessions. So now when they go away, they can still work with us virtually, especially if they have access to reformer with where they are, or some of them just really like to dive deep dive into the mat stuff over the summer. Okay. Another thing we did in studio was because we had more space in the studio, we offered unlimited monthly membership flash sales that would only be for June, July, and August. So we offered people the opportunity to do a three month unlimited membership for a discounted rate than we normally sell, but it's because we have more availability in the studio and making some money is better than making no money. So a lot of people that purchased this were like teachers. So thinking of running a teacher promotion in the summer, thinking of doing some sort of summer camp because kids are out of school might be great. Some sort of sports performance program. Thinking like that is a great way to implement new revenue streams, into your business and keep clients coming back in those slower months. Okay. So number four is launch a marketing campaign to attract new clients. <clears throat> we say this a lot as well. It's easy to get comfortable with your regulars, right? But business owners should always be looking for new clientele. Now I'm a big, big believer that retention eats lead generation for breakfast, but when you are slower, when your retention dips a little bit, like it may in the summer or in the winter, if you're in places like the Berkshires, New York, the Hamptons, Colorado, you know, maybe your time dips when it gets really cold and people come to places like us, like Miami. And by the way, if you have clients, customers, patients that come to Miami, be sure to send them to Pilates in the Grove. That's a little plug for me. Um, but try to attract new customers. Maybe again, like things like teachers are a great thing to do in the summer when they're off and maybe they have some extra time. Okay. So it's really great to start maybe replacing some of these customers that travel over slower months with new people, creating a marketing campaign geared specifically towards attracting new clients can be very beneficial letting new people know about your service or maybe even a product that you offer. Okay. People love spending, saving money. People love saving money, not necessarily spending money, but maybe you're offering a new time discount to encourage them to come on board. Maybe you're offering a summer only promotion in the summer. I keep saying summer cause I'm from Miami. I'm sorry, during slow time. So it could be winter for you. Um, Think of things like that. What kind of marketing strategy or campaign can you think of running during your slower times? Another thing you can do is really take this time where you have more time to become more visible online. It's a great time now that it's a little slower to create more online video content 
create more um, blog posts, create more reels during this time because you have more time. Maybe you can set aside a time to go live on Facebook or Instagram doing Q and A's every Wednesday over the summer. Okay. It's time that you can maybe build out your YouTube channel, build out a home exercise platform, which we host on our YouTube channel over the summer. Okay. <clears throat> when your staff has more room on their schedule, maybe instead of saying, oh, you can just go home early, say these two hours, we're going to actually have you create some social content right? So that we can then batch and repurpose later on when we're busier and we don't have as much time to be creating content. I love this. So when we're slower, we really do a lot of recording for our on-demand. We record new content for our teacher training program. We update our home exercise platform, which we use, which we host on YouTube. So all of these things we really try to get done during our slower time. Another thing that we have toyed with a little bit during our slower times is enlisting the services of an influencer. Now, the influencer doesn't necessarily have to be someone on Instagram. It can also be someone in your community, a like-minded business. Maybe there's an athlete, a news anchor, um, a community influencer, a runner, something to this effect that can also co-brand and co-network and co-promote and co-market on Instagram or YouTube and things on other social media platforms. So I'll give you an example. We have a, um, a client that has a big social media following. She's a model. And so in the summer, when she comes to Miami and she does a lot of Pilates, we have offered her different types of services, maybe a free session from time to time to post on her social media feed and tag Pilates in the Grove. We've even given her things like a coupon code for her to use so she can give people that follow her like a 10% discount on their first package. And what it does for us, the strategy behind this is, is it allows us to get in front of her audience Okay. If people in her audience know, like, and trust her and see that she's doing Pilates at Pilates in the Grove, they will maybe that it's already kind of like a review for them. Right. So then they'll seek out our services. If they go to our website, we can then even see if we can retarget them in some way with a future ad. We'll talk a little bit about this in a minute, but maybe enlisting, I, I do not recommend paying for an influencer unless you know you're going to get a ton of return on your investment. I would recommend maybe doing some bartering or again, maybe can you get on their social media platform? Can you have them be on your social media platform? Can you do an Instagram live or a Facebook live together where you both can have access to each other's audiences? So this is something that you might have more time to plan during slower months. Okay. Number seven, <clears throat> ramping up your marketing strategy. And I'm going to go back to, this is a great time to repurpose content or really take the time to create content for the following season when you are going to be really, really, really busy. Maybe you can run a retargeting ad to everyone that came to your website <clears throat> or engage with your Instagram post in the first quarter of the year and now run a retargeting ad to them to see if they want to take advantage of your new client special. All right. If you're interested in learning more about how you can do these retargeting ads and stuff, I would encourage you to um, check out our inner circle, our Beyond the Movement inner circle, where we talk about ads. I believe registration is closed now but you can get on the wait list and we're probably going to open registration in another couple of weeks versus wait an entire quarter. So if this is some of the stuff that you're interested in learning, how you can actually do it for your unique business, go ahead and visit kristagurka.com and get on the wait list for the inner circle. Okay. So moving on number eight, maybe offer a loyalty program to your current current clientele so that you can increase some cash spend. Maybe you can run a promotion that you don't run throughout the rest of the year. For example, that monthly unlimited at a discounted rate, and they're only available to your current clientele. So whereas a lot of times we do things where they're only available for new clients, maybe offering something that's only available for your regular members 
is kind of like a little twist on that. And it really goes a long way for customer loyalty and customer appre appreciation. Um, maybe you can offer some workshops in the summer. Like if you're a yoga studio, you can offer an arm balancing workshop. Or if you are a physical therapy practice and you can offer some sort of continuing education workshop or a Pilates studio workshop. Also remember that those of us in this industry, we are slower in these months too. So we can take time off work to go to continuing education. All right. So if you can offer a workshop where people can come in, it's easier for people in our industry to go to workshops and conventions and conferences and continuing ed in the summer because we're not as busy in our own businesses. Okay. So that's something for you to consider. Number nine, this is one of my favorites. Take vacation. Take vacation. This is the time to take a week off, two weeks off, okay? When it comes to running a seasonal business where you have these seasonal peaks and valleys, it's really, really important to make sure that you take enough vacation time and put aside days where you can recuperate, regenerate so that you can stay fresh and ready for work and remain productive during the busy seasons without experiencing burnout. Okay, so when we're hitting this January, February, March, where we're really like, again, operating at like a 90% or above utilization, I keep telling my team, I'm like, remember, May and June, we're going to be slower. <clears throat> so just think about that. It's going to level out in the summer where we're all where we will all be able to take a little bit more time off, maybe work slower day, uh, slower days, shorter days maybe go down to a four day work week. Okay. Maybe take a two week vacation in the summer. Cause there's more opportunities for others on your team to cover for you. And if you don't have a team, maybe there's opportunities for you to take two weeks off and you can squeeze people in more people in the week before and more people in the week after so that you're not actually losing revenue. A lot of restaurants during slow season, so sometimes if their slow season is in the summer or if their slow season is in the winter, they may actually close for an entire week. Some close for an entire month, okay? So a perfect example is Joe Stone Crab down here, which is a world famous Stone Crab restaurant. When Stone Crabs are out of season, the restaurant actually closes, they close. All right. They are not open in the summer. They've started to be open a little bit more in the summer, but they actually close outside of stone crab season. All right. It allows people to get some well-deserved rest. It allows you as a business to save on inventory and save on some costs. So think about that. All right. And then number 10, another one of my favorites is learn how to diversify your income. And we talked about this back in, let me see, what episode was it? So I think it was episode 124. I think so. 124, we went back and talked about how to diversify your income. So this is a really, really, really important one. So go back and listen to that one if you want to hear a little bit more. But putting all of our eggs in one basket and relying on a single revenue stream is never good. Cause like we've seen in the last two years, when that revenue stream can be pulled out from under us, it can be very scary. So expanding your services or products can help you during sometimes these outside of peak seasons. Now I don't mean completely transform your business into something else. But think of things, some things like we talked about, can you offer workshops because you have more time and more space? Can you run a teacher training program in the summer or some, some sort of program, some continuing education, a camp for students because you have more time, okay, and more space. These things help keep your business afloat when times are a little tougher and money is a little tighter. All right. It's all about finding where the demand is, maybe boosting on demand as people travel and you can be like, hey, take Pilates in the Grove in your pocket. Right. You can use this wherever you are. Consider expanding maybe into different services that are complimentary. Maybe if you have more rooms available, you can bring in a massage therapist during the summer. Maybe you can sell 
supplementary products, okay, or services that will benefit you both, both in peak and low season times. It ensures really a continued consistent cash flow, regardless of when clients decide to come and visit your business in person. All right. So I'll give you a perfect example of this. I always go back to the food and beverage and business because they're a really great example of this. So food trucks know that they do um, usually about 50% less in revenue during winter months, not in Miami, but in places where it's really cold. So they can, they really move to businesses like catering in the winter. Okay. Cause people are not coming out to food trucks. So they do a big increase in their catering business in the winter. And they, they lean into the messaging of don't go out in the winter. Don't go out when it's cold. We'll bring it to you. Okay. So one thing that, that I foresee is really leaning into kind of our virtual platforms, our digital platforms, telehealth during the winter months, if it's cold where you are, where people may not want to leave their house. All right. Or maybe you don't necessarily have to get canceled to all of your sessions because the weather is outside isn't great. As long as they have some sort of internet connection, they can continue to work with you. All right. So I'm going to just go back and review these 10. Okay. So I'll go back and review these 10 here. So these are all ways that you can plan ahead for dips in your cash flow and your attendance and stuff during, um, if you have seasonality in your business. Now, The number one thing you have to do is you have to know your seasonal business cycle. You have to know where these peaks and valleys are going to happen. So you have to really be tracking everything. Then you really want to measure the difference. How much revenue are you losing during the slower months? And are your your expenses going down also? So is your profit margin staying the same or is that getting smaller? Okay. You don't want to have huge expenses coming in, in the months where your cash flow isn't as great. So that's basically number one. And number two, understand your business cycle and then measure the difference in revenue between these seasonal cycles. All right. Number three, ask your clients. Don't just assume. We all know what assume means. It makes an ass out of you and me, right? So survey your regular clients. Actually ask them what they do during these season, seasonal times in your business, where they can go, and maybe what they would love to be able to continue to interact with you. Launch a new marketing campaign to attract new clients during this time. Think, well, you know, think during seasonality, like, Can you really launch a live streaming platform if it's winter and people don't want to leave their house? Can you market to teachers during the summer when they have extra time off? Take this opportunity. So this is number five. Take this opportunity to become more visible online and on your website by creating content. Now is the time when you're seasonal, when you have slower times where you can, you, your team, yourself can take this time and say, okay, I'm a little slower now. So I'm going to take this time. And once a week, I am going to create content so that when I get busier next season, I already have all this content batched and I don't have to spend time doing it. Okay. Number six was that idea of enlisting the services of an influencer. All right. Number seven, ramp up your marketing strategy. So again, as you are creating more content, can you be getting in front of your audience more often because now you have time to really ramp up that marketing strategy. Number eight, maybe you offer, so instead of offering a new client special that's only available with new clients, maybe you offer a loyalty special that's only available to current members or year-long members, okay? Get creative with these kind of things. Take some much needed time off. Take mucho vacation, all right? These are really going to revitalize you, re-energize you, re-motivate you for those times that you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off just because it's so busy, okay? And then number 10, diversify your income. Remember, go back and check out the previous episode. I think it's 124, where you can learn about how to diversify your revenue stream, all right? Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I really love talking about and giving people real life, tangible, actionable advice that they can go and put into your practice tomorrow if you wanted to. Now, you don't have to do all of these things. Pick one, pick two, talk to your team about it. If you're interested in learning how 
<laughs> you can take the time in slower months, maybe in the summer and put this together for you and your unique business. You know, I get a lot of times where people say, I don't have the time to go through some mentoring or coaching or work on my business. Well, you do have the time during your slower months. So consider visiting kristagurka.com and getting on the wait list to join Inner Circle or look at the Fit Biz Foundations program, depending on where you are in your business right now. Okay. Um, another announcement I'd have to, I'm going to make um, is that we are going to be moving in May to once a week episodes instead of twice a week. I really, really, really enjoy doing twice a week, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's becoming just a little challenging for me to record, edit, do all the things for two episodes a week. So we will be doing one episode a week. It will begin in May. We have some great guests coming on. We'll still be having, instead of our female Friday features, we'll be having a female founder feature where we will still be um, showcasing some amazing women in business, female founders. If you're interested in being a guest, go ahead and email me, Krista at PilatesInTheGrove.com. Um, you know, as always, thanks for sticking around to the end of the episode. It would really, really, really mean a lot to me and really help me get this podcast in front of as many people as possible. If you could download or subscribe to this podcast, and if you could leave a review, people really read the reviews. They want to know, like, is this person full of shit? Is she valuable? Um, you know, so even if you could leave a quick rating and maybe a few words of what you've gained from listening to this podcast, it would really mean a lot to me. And I would be uber appreciative. Okay. So that's all I got. Okay. Um, once a week episodes beginning in May. If you're interested in being a guest, feel free to email me, Krista at PilatesInTheGrove.com. And as always, go check out my website, KristaGurka.com for ways that you can work with us. And there's also a ton of freebies on there. And DM me over on Instagram. I love hearing from you guys. I love interacting with people over there. And until next time, bye for now. <laughs>